I'm Mike Forster. I've been a doctor 40 years. I've always worked in the country. Each town, each station, each area we go to, very different. None of them are alike. Really, you cover every aspect of general practice. Well, we've come out to Ivanhoe, which is a small town population, a couple of hundred, about four hours driving distance from uh, Broken Hill. Dr Mike Forster has a busy day ahead with back-to-back -back appointments at the clinic. We wouldn't be able to function without it because we really, really need it. The Royal Flying Doctor Service covers every corner of Australia. Well known for emergency evacuations, it's recently broadened its focus. The Flying Doctor is maintaining its emergency service. There's nothing changing about that, but we are increasing our primary care. So there's myself, a GP, uh, normally we would have on rotation mental health workers, drug and alcohol workers, dentists. Seven million people live outside our major cities, but just under a third of our population. Do they get the same proportion of health service resources and other uh, resources? No. Come down, Liz. Right, thank you. Third on the diet. Right, thank you, you very much. You don't you, Mike? Yes, I yep. do, I do. Come and have a seat. I think the closest GP would probably be Hay, and that's about 212, 220 kilometres away, which is, if you are very unwell, it's a long way to go. How are you going these days? Not real good. I'm getting a bit on the tired side again. and. Liz Lawson has lived in Ivanhoe in Western New South Wales for 32 years. She's worried about her energy levels and is glad to see the doctor today. So I think we're going to need to organise another infusion for you, just like we did last year. So. Right. She reckons the government often forgets about people in remote towns. There's a lot more that could be done. They rely on farmers and everything for food. Well, they need medical attention too. I've been flown away twice myself with various uh, uh, accidents. Take you through to see Mike now. Okay, yep. come on. Thanks. Farmer Robert Vag is also here to see the doctor. He's lived outside Ivanhoe since 1937 and isn't sure when the town last had a resident GP. Let's have a gentle feel, if I may. I'd say it'd be uh, 40 years ago, or perhaps, I'm not sure, but there was, there was few, few GPs here after the Second World War, then the, they left. Australia's first Rural Health Commissioner, Dr Paul Worley, knows there's a problem. There's an avalanche of chronic disease uh, emerging in rural and remote Australia. If you look at diabetes, mental health, obesity, uh, cardiovascular disease, deaths from cancer, suicide responses to mental health, all of those are increased compared to what we see in the cities. The latest national health averages show that people in rural areas live shorter lives. Queensland has the lowest gap in life expectancy between cities and the regions, based on the average out of every 100,000 residents. New South Wales and WA have significant gaps. The Northern Territory, with a more than 25% Indigenous population, has the worst report card, double the national average of early deaths. The average rate of respiratory disease in Australia is 16.4 for every 100,000. In the NT, it's 46. With cardiovascular disease, the average is 58.5. In the NT, it's 139. When it really comes down to it, there's just a lack of access. And that makes a huge difference. It means people do present later. It means people do put off treatment that has been recommended. And that all impacts on their health. If the RFDS wasn't here, uh, there'd be a, a big hole, a very, very big hole. Now, there are clearly other big challenges. There are gaps in our universal access to healthcare. 
Back in the city, Chief Medical Officer Brendan Murphy says an ongoing problem is finding doctors prepared to work outside the big cities or larger regional areas. I'm of the view that we have globally probably almost too many doctors in Australia now. We have one of the highest ratios of doctors per population in the OECD and yet we still have significant parts of rural Australia that struggle to find a workforce. So that distribution of our workforce and distribution of services is a challenge. So how have your blood sugars been going? Have they been doing the right thing? Dr Paul Worley has worked in rural areas most of his career. He believes the answer lies in training a new breed of multi-skilled doctor. The solution in rural Australia is the rural generalist. A rural generalist is a doctor who's trained to provide comprehensive general practice, emergency care that rural communities need, and those areas of specialty care that the GP would delegate to another specialist in the city. This requires a change in our training. We have a health system that does some things well for some people and can function very well, but it's not consistent, it's not, not across the board. So I think we really need to focus on making sure our health system works to its fullest extent for everybody all the time. <laughs> So far in this series, we've looked at challenges faced by general practitioners, pressures on the public hospital system, and health problems in regional and remote areas. Now we turn to another service where more and more Australians are not getting the care they need, dental health. Oral health policy and programs in Australia have been a simple dog's breakfast. If my teeth are getting worse in the, in the longer time that I'm waiting, it's, uh, it's definitely going to cause more work for them to have to fix up and, and possibly more severe problems. Graham Williams lives at Semaphore Beach in Adelaide. He's married with one child and another on the way. I didn't look after my teeth at all when I was younger. Uh, well, there's a few that uh, need to be removed. They've broken off down to the gum, basically. I, when I smile, you can see that a few are missing. You want to ride today? Yes, please, yes. I didn't go for often normal sort of checkups and routine work because, uh, yeah, I knew it would cost quite a bit. Graham is currently being treated for cancer, which has spread to his brain. While he's not expecting replacement teeth, he'd like to get the ones causing him pain removed, and he's been waiting for more than a year. If I was to get my teeth fixed up, I think it'd be a lot uh, one less stress to worry about while I'm, I'm going through my treatment and uh, worrying about the melanoma instead. You have called the South Australian Dental Service, Port Adelaide Community Dental Clinic. Whenever I ask them about the wait or the reason for the wait, they don't seem to have any answer or no. Please hold the line and we'll be with you as soon as possible. I rang them again about three months ago just to make sure I was still on the list and still going and at that point they gave me a waiting time of about 12 to 15 months. I've removed teeth for a gentleman that's tried to remove them with pliers. He was in absolute agony. Dentist Jalal Khan sees a range of barriers to good dental health. For some people it's just too expensive to access it in the private sector. For other people it's the tyranny of distance. They're just too far away from the nearest dentist even if they can afford it. For other people they, they might be homebound or um, difficult to get out of an aged care facility. Once a month, Dr Khan heads out of the city in a mobile clinic to provide dental care to people in remote locations. I've had uh, patients that have had teeth held together with um, paper clips inside them and then I've uh, managed to restore the tooth if possible or, um, or remove the tooth if, if need be. Dentistry is not covered by Medicare, so individuals shoulder the burden. In 2015-16, private patients paid 58% of Australia's total dental costs of $9.9 billion. The cost forces many to turn to the public queue. We have definitely seen lots of people on the truck that have been waiting for months, if not years, um, sometimes two, three, four years. I've seen patients that have been wearing the same denture for 15, 20 years. 
And uh, I mean, if you, if you imagine wearing the same shoe without socks for 15, 20 years, um, I akin it to the same thing. Each year, only a fifth of all adults needing care in the public system actually receive it. Most wait more than 12 months for an appointment. The gap between the wealthy and the low-income earners is very broad. In fact, in Australia, the oral health of adults affected by that gap is, is amongst the worst in the OECD. Dr Martin Doolan has been at the forefront of dental health policy for more than three decades. He's keenly aware of the impact of such delays. People realise waiting times are long and they give up. They end up waiting until there's a problem. The problem becomes severe and debilitating by the time they seek care. It becomes emergency care and that pattern of dental care is the most destructive to dental health of all the patterns that people can adopt. Oral health is the third highest cause of acute preventable hospital admissions in Australia. Dr Doolan believes a federally funded system is the answer. If you have a dental service like Medicare, a significant proportion of people will seek that care and get the care they need. I just wanted to confirm I'm still on the dental care waiting list. You're about 101 on our list, okay. so I'm saying that you would possibly be in the next round. I think it is a long time to wait for dental, especially in a country like Australia. You think it would be um, a lot better, especially I think because poor dental health can also lead to other health issues, um, and that's um, more of a strain on the health system in general. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.